Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our first session. This is a manure shed session. I'm Rob Minan. I work at Penn State University in the Department of Animal Science. My uh, topic today is a case study of strategic expansion of the swine and poultry industries in Pennsylvania. We will have uh, three other speakers today that will also be involved in the manure shed effort. They are uh, coming to us virtually because they're all our USDA ARS employees who uh, had trouble getting permissions and travel uh, agreements to get here in time. I'm supposed to be able to advance my slides here. Not working for me. Got it. Okay. I just have to click on the slide itself. Got it. Okay. So before I start into the presentation, I'd like to let you all know that we have the Menor North American Menorah Expo, which is going to be back into an in-person event in 2022. I'm the co-chair of North American Menorah Expo this year is in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, a uh, fantastic area. And we had the Menorah Expo at that spot in 2015. We had about 2,000 people from 26 different states and several provinces attend Menorah Expo. It's on July 13th and 14th. So if you can get there, please plan to participate and recommend to your producers and people you work with that this event is on hand. So I want to introduce a little bit about the North Shed project. The project is part of the USDA ARS's long-term agroecosystem research network or LTAR network. You can see that the uh, network is scattered across the United States in this first graphic. These slides were provided, provided me from Sherry Spiegel, who we thought would be speaking first to introduce the topic. And I'm kind of taking some of her slides. The LTAR network uh, combines a number of things, economic, social, productivity, human conditioning, environmental uh, aspects into goals for agriculture. And this Northshed project is a great project. I'm getting a lot of interference. Can we swing a door shut? Thank you. Um, in the Menor Shed group, I got invited to participate in this in 2020, and um, maybe it was 2019, 2020, and um, there's about 85 scientists uh, in this network, most of them from USDA ARS. I'm not in that organization. We had an original concept paper in 2020. Sherry Spiegel was the lead author in that, and we have 11 articles that are coming out, some of them already published in a special edition of Journal of Environmental Quality on manure sheds. So what is a manure shed? If we look at this simple definition here, uh, somehow we don't have a pointer today. Um, the lands where manure nutrients from one or more animal feeding operations can be recycled to meet environmental production and economic goals. The term manure shed was first coined by some colleagues at Penn State, uh, Saha et, et al in 2018 and defined as we see here, with our paper uh, originally with, with Sherry Spiegel. So the manure shed concept, we look at this on top here, we have the phosphorus um, in the swine industry uh, and nitrogen in the swine industry in, in 2012. These are calculated uh, amounts of phosphorus and without a doubt, these are where the animals are located as well. Um, but when we look at a manure shed concept, it's the area where these nutrients are in surplus in relationship to the crops, which can assimilate those nutrients and take them up. When we have area that is in surplus, it would make sense that we would want to move those nutrients somewhere else if we can. And we might move those to an area which is a sink area. That's, that is an area where we have animal nutrients, in this case, swine, nutrients that are deficit compared to the animal uh, nutrients on site. This can be regional, county level, farm level, watershed level, different scales uh, can pertain to that. With this presentation, I wanna focus on a section of a paper which we just published here uh, recently. I was lead author on this and the title of the paper was Opportunities to Implement Manure Shed Management in the Iowa, North Carolina and Pennsylvania Swine Industries. This will be in that special edition of JEQ. There are two other sections uh, that I'm not going to spend much time on. One was a simplistic comparison of land application area needs for nitrogen and phosphorus in all three states. What we did was we took some simple calculations of uh, typical crop, typical manure characteristics, 
and the application methods in each state. And so how much land do we need if we're going to apply on a nitrogen based? How much land do we need if we are going to apply on a phosphorus based? And did a comparison. Uh, a lot of us that work with nutrient management would know that simplistically and, and understand that intuitively. But for this paper, we felt like an audience would want to understand some of these things. We also have a section that looks at some technologies or just highlights the need for technologies that would partition nutrients in particular phosphorus to allow us to take some of that phosphorus and move it from a source area to a sink area. We just heard speakers this morning mention some of those ideas. So when we hone in on the section I wanna talk about, we're going to look at a Pennsylvania case study. If we look at uh, the hogs in the United States, these are 2012 data and the story is okay even though the, the data is a couple years old. And Pennsylvania ranks 12th in hogs we market over 3 million animals a year, and we can see that we know that U.S. hog production continues to climb as we look from 2011 through to 2020. Even though our paper was focused on the swine industry, we did this comparison with poultry. Here we have a representation of where poultry are located across the U.S. We can see that Pennsylvania in the in the egg production works ranks fourth, Iowa uh, number one, Ohio two, and um, our production in broilers is represented here. Over the last 50 years, we can see that broiler production, of course, increases. So we know we have more and more animals. We have more and more concentrations of animals, more and more nutrients concentrated, both swine and poultry industry. Uh, poultry industry, very uh, important economically in Pennsylvania as well. There we go. So here we mapped an overlap. We know that swine and poultry industries have a lot of similarities. Both are integrated industries, and we have areas where if we looked at those maps earlier, we said, well, sometimes we have in a certain county, this is county level data based on National Ag Statistics Service. Sometimes we have a lot of pigs and we have a lot of chickens all in the same county. So if we look at just a, a swine manure shed concept or a poultry manure shed concept, sometimes this overlapping impact becomes important. So if we look at this, Top is phosphorus nutrients calculated based on animal units and bottom is nitrogen. They're gonna show us some similar things, but what we're looking at is when we have a green county, it's predominated, predominated more by pigs. If we have a red county, it's more predominant with chickens. If we have a county in the middle, which is orange or yellow, we will have an, an area where we see big pigs and poultry both producing nutrients. We see some of those in uh, the Midwest. We see some of those in North Carolina on the Eastern shore, but we also see some of those in Pennsylvania, right? Lancaster County being our poster child of, of uh, in our state, Pennsylvania, as the, our top producing animals uh, location. So we see this overlap. And part of the Menorah Ship Project was thinking about how do these things impact that more concept of surplus nutrients and what might we do to move those on. They locked the front door. People are dying to get in here from every direction. <laughs> huh? <laughs> All right. So with our paper, we, we focus on uh, the, the Iowa, North Carolina, Pennsylvania uh, manure sheds. But with this focus here today, I wanna to take you down and tell you a story about Pennsylvania and some of the things that we started to look at. When I got invited to work with the Norshed Group, we got together for a meeting in, in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and we had a, a little brain trust for a couple of days and how are we gonna approach this? And they said, Minan, we want you to, to head up the swine paper. I said, well, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about because everything you've told me the last few days and the things I just told you are pretty intuitive to me, right? Nutrients are where the animals are. We'd like to move them to where the animals aren't. That's pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so what's novel? So I started thinking about this program that we have. Through our Department of Agriculture, our State Conservation Commission, for the past 20 years, uh, my funding as the lead educator for the Manure Hauler Program on our grant is also a colleague who uh, does about 40% of his work on a project but Dr. Robert Michael, he does odor site evaluations. These evaluations are very unique. They are uh, going to look at farms before they are built and before they're constructed. They work primarily with uh, one integrator called Country View Family Farms, 
uh, on the swine end and Bell and Evans poultry on the poultry end. Across time, he's done 254 site evaluations for swine, 275 for poultry. These are in the years uh, 20, 2000 to 2020. We took three that were in 1999 and lumped them in the year 2020. So let's look at these graphs. This is the locations where these, farm, these companies are looking to locate animals. This doesn't mean the animals are there. If we look at hogs in this column, poultry in this column, and we group them together by year groups of five, 2000, 2005, 2006, to 2010, 2011 to 2015, 2016, 2020. If you look at where we were, our traditional area in swine is in this south central area. We also have that overlapping poultry area there. The, set, the integrators have looked at, in the swine end, moving the pigs east and moving pigs north. The poultry industry has largely stayed in their historic zone, in their historic manure shed uh, surplus area. What's the fundamental difference? We all know this, right? Swine is a liquid manure, poultry is a solid manure. We handle them differently. We have different challenges and benefits of transporting them. When we look at where the integrators are located and where their processing plants are located. The harvest facility for pigs is, is Hatfield Quality Meats all the way in the southeast part of the state. It takes a lot more transportation distance as the pigs move east and as the pigs move north to get the animals to that facility. Poultry, however, keeps their facility close and they wanna stay close at hand and they wanna keep their, their animals transporting a lower distance. So the odor site assessment came into play with this. The data I just showed you, let me back up. If we look at the, uh, these graph, the larger the circle, the more animal units we have in a county. If it was, the county had a low animal number, unit number, we did not include it. Pink counties are pigs. They did indeed, based on NAS data, population data, inventory data, pigs did indeed move west and north and the transportation distances are different. The, the, uh, the poultry stayed in that same area. What are the influences on this? Well, when we think about nutrients, and a lot of things we talk about in this conference are nitrogen and phosphorus keeping them close to home or moving them down the road, that comes into play. But there's also other influences we need to think about, including the health and welfare of the animals. The animal industry in Pennsylvania and the swine end does not want to locate their pigs close to other pigs. They want to move further away from other pigs, which is moving north and moving west. That's a biosecurity health benefit. They also have this social force. That is odor site assessments show us that the industry wants to locate their farms away from people and away from areas where they're gonna have odor conflict. So we have social in, impacts here. And then the manure shed impact is that the farms that they seek to work with and contract with they're looking for good stewards, people that can manage their nutrients because the nutrients cannot travel far because they're liquid. They wanna keep those liquids close to home and find someone who can utilize those nutrients on their own farm level manure shed or in their neighborhood. The poultry industry, a little different. The social impacts and health impacts are still here, but they actually are concerned about traveling shorter distances with their birds to the harvest facility. They want them on their trucks less than 90 minutes so that whenever they uh, take the animal off the truck, they can harvest it and have a quality product meat. Litter is routinely uh, transported with our broker industry quite a ways. So we have this ability to move the litter. So what's, what we found is that the swine industry is impacting manure sheds by moving animals. The industry is already changing their manure shed footprint. The poultry industry continues to develop and even more so this year with high uh, cost of fertilizer to develop their product or their uh, manure shed influenced by moving litter or moving manure and not the animals. So we see this difference and um, that's pretty much the story I want to tell you on that one. So we will move forward. But before I do this, I want to show you this picture I had. I was, I was eating breakfast this morning and I saw Glenn Arnold ordering his meal. So, all right. With questions, I, I have questions. Time for questions, Leslie. No. no. Okay. So sorry. Late, so that, that, you can catch. I did start late. I thought you were rushing. I, so. Um, we have to get back on time. Okay. Orders are to get back on time. So. Can I take one? Huh? I one. one. 
Anybody have a question? Okay, that really was Glenn Arnold. Yes. The main challenge on the concept of North Shed, you mean for us in Pennsylvania or just overall? You know, it's, it's still this new concept. And some of it, uh, for me, the challenge was trying to see, well, what's new with this? And as we've explored, now all of a sudden we have these other papers that were going to tell us a lot of things. We, we see all the levels of scientists that can come in from social to the nutrient aspects to animal experts. And I think we're just starting to grasp what the Menorah Shed concept can do and how it can help us to drive some of the policies and where we're headed in the future.